Peace. This is a meat and potato sorcery production starring myself, the Warrior Alchemist. And today's topic for the occult family is Astaroth and the Kalipoth. Astaroth is one of the demons or slash demoness from the Oz Goetia. And as many of you know, she's great to work with for beginners and can help you with time magic. That's very few sorcerers speak about that. Astaroth can help you with time magic. And her incense, of course, or his incense is sandalwood in the colors green. And when I had a conversation with Metatron, as I spoke about in the previous video, I followed this up because Metatron had helped point me into a certain direction. So I had to follow it up. And this is where the Kalipoth comes in. The Kalipoth is not the so-called dark side of the Kabbalah. One cannot exist without the other. It is merely the shadow, the darker aspect, the yin energy. That is the Kalipoth. It's going to basically do what the military does. If you join the army or the navy or the marines, they break you down and then they rebuild or refashion you. Anyone who has served in the military, you're going to hear that same story. If you served in the armed services, they're going to destroy you. And they're going to have you become what they want you to become. So the Kalipoth or the shells or the husk is no different. And I asked Astaroth, because before I was bandering names around, just as a test, like, Lucifer or Azazel, etc. And then I hit on the mark. And I said, Astaroth. So I asked her, I said, did you initiate me into the Kalipoth? And Astaroth was like, yes, you've been initiated for years now with the Kalipoth. And you went through several spheres. One thing about the Kalipoth, once you're initiated, you're going to find out what you're really made of. Now, what can that mean? It can mean a whole bunch of things. You end up losing your job, your house, your car, being homeless. Um, someone that you love all of a sudden decides that they don't want to marry you and not marriage material. So I had to press because I'm curious now. And Astro was like, yes, I initiated you. So this is what people have to know. You don't necessarily have to be initiated in the clip off as it may be in your contract. Now, what do I mean by that? Asroff said it was written in your contract that you were going to be a magus and you were going to go to the clip off. So I just pushed you through. That's what she did. She pushed me through. Not saying that I've went through all the tunnels of set and all that. I'm not saying that. But have I went through some a number of spheres so far? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And it humbles you because you're going to see what you truly are made of. And this is where people can't let their ego get in the way. Because a lot of times, a lot of people spend their lives running from what they're supposed to do when it comes to magic. And I've known people that's done this with the Orisha, with the Loa, with the Nether. You know what you're supposed to do and you still do all this running. I don't have that time, effort, and energy to be running. I don't. So it humbles you and you just realize how far you really have to go. But it was a great conversation because Astral was like, do you know how many dimensions there are? In different worlds. So Earth isn't the big deal that everyone wants to make it out to be. Yes, it has some relevance, but it's not like how people make it out to be. And then, of course, I had to ask the question to Astaroth about reincarnation. She was like, you're not coming back here. So, OK, got that out the way. But you got to be careful because. There's things on the other side. You can become, depending on what you have, 
you can become part of an undead priesthood. In other words, people that practice psychic vampirism, they're still doing that on the other side. I mean, even Santa Morte, she has that, an undead priesthood. So, you know, it all depends. But Astaroth was like, yeah, that, you, that was written in your soul contract that this is what you wanted to do. So I helped you. I pushed you along with that. I've always been here. Say, remember that conversation? I said, yeah, I remember the conversation. I went to the library of all places, and that's where me and Astaroth officially had our so-called meeting, and I asked her, would she help me? And she agreed. And she said, I've been there for you ever since. Probably even more before then. So, you know, one thing with the clip off, if you're mentally unstable, do not do it. If you're arrogant and egotistical, do not do it. And also, don't rush through spears. This is bigger than you reading books. And I don't care who they're by, Thomas Carlson or Azanath Mason. And I'm not saying they're not great authors, but there's a difference between reading it and being able to apply it spiritually. That's like you see a couple of Kung Fu movies all of a sudden and you coming out and you're trying to do this in the actual fight, you're going to end up getting put on your neck. So it was a great conversation, a great dialogue with Astaroth of the Goetia. And if a person does want to do this, you can do it with path working and you can get initiated and you can do a self-initiation if you choose when working with the clip off, but don't rush, take your time. So with that, that is your meat and potato sorcery for the day. I am the Ward Alchemist. You're one of my friends. Peace.